The rulebooks for tabletop RPGs and systems can seem big and intimidating. On Too Long Didn't Play, we break down the complex content of tabletop RPGs in around five minutes so you can decide if you want to check them out in more detail. Now, I'm not normally one for the horror genre. Do I include elements of horror and supernatural realities in games that I run all the time? But I've never gravitated towards horror as a genre. However, about a month ago, this beautiful dark graphic scrolled across my feed for the horror RPG Shiver, and I knew I wanted to play it. Making a character in Shiver is as easy as answering three simple questions. What's your character's archetype? What's your character's background? And what does your character fear? The first question is by far the crunchiest. Six of the seven character archetypes correspond to one of the main stats. Warriors are full of physical grit. The weird are able to create strange supernatural effects and scholars depend on their smarts. There's even an archetype for lucky characters called the fool. Shiver uses a simple life path system for each of the archetypes to help your character further define their skills and abilities. After you pick your archetype, you pick your background. Is your socialite archetype a slippery con man or a charismatic priestess? Is your maverick archetype an ex-special forces spook or a stealthy hunter traveling through the woods? Each of these will add an additional skill, but also give you a flaw that you need to deal with in play. Finally, you finish your character by simply answering the question, what did they fear? Is it needles, the basement, the dark, that the men in suits will come back for them? That they'll lose someone else that they love? This gives the director everything they need to draw them into play and to play on their fears. Now, Shiver has a really straightforward health, armor, and movement setup. They have a really amazing fluid combat initiative system that I found very satisfying. But the two mechanics in Shiver that I loved the most were, without a doubt, reading the knuckle bones and the doom clock. The creators of Shiver believe that every roll of the dice should create tension and move the story forward. The system uses a dice pool based on the number of points your character has in each stat and the given conditions and situations surrounding the roll. If you get the number of successes you need, great. If you don't, though, the director can look at the symbols on the die to tell you how you moved forward. Trying to knock down a door, but you failed your grit check? Too bad. But it looks like you rolled high on the heart and the people inside were moved to open it for you. Or maybe you rolled lots of wit and you actually just realized that you need to pull on the door and not push. Or maybe you even rolled a ton of luck, which you can actually convert to success or bank for future rolls. The other mechanic that I loved was the Doom Clock. The Doom Clock is an ongoing visual manifestation of how bad things are getting in your game. The higher the clock ticks up, the worse things are. There are 60 minutes on the Doom Clock, and every 15 minutes, something bad happens. Every time you roll the dice failures or rolling strain symbols clicks the Doom Clock up, bringing you closer to one of those bad events, or unlocking additional stronger powers for your characters. The tension this creates every time you roll the dice, especially when you're close to a 15 minute mark, is palpable at the table. I love clock mechanics in games, and I think Shiver slays the use of one major clock better than any other system. Outside of the mechanics, there are two things I think have to be mentioned about Shiver. First is a solid cinematic feel that comes from co-creator Charlie Menzies' background in film, married with Barney Menzies' solid grasping of how to bounce that out in the mechanics. It makes the game smooth and absolutely satisfying to play. Secondly, though, the art is absolutely amazing. It's constantly and accurately compared to Mike Mignola's work. This game's art is beautifully done and it creates a phenomenal complement to play. It's rare to see a freshman game offering with this much visual pop, and it absolutely brings home the theme. 
In brief, if you're looking for a system where you can tell a deep, dark, and desperate story, Shiver can do that. Or if you want to play a group of misfits somewhere between Hellboy and Scooby-Doo like we did in our actual play with Chris and Barney, it'll handle that amazingly well also. I don't know how often I'll play in the horror genre. As a probably ridiculously optimistic and hopeful individual, it's just not the first type of genre that I gravitate to. But I do know that whenever I'm looking to play horror, Shiver will be the top of my list for the systems that I want to play it in. Thanks for watching. My name is Tony Vicenda. I'm Chief Alchemist over at Plus One EXP, where we multi class in tabletop game design and beard and skincare alchemy. If you have questions about Shiver, or if there's a system that you want to know more about but don't have time to learn, let us know down in the comments. You can also let us know your thoughts about any of this at Plus One EXP on any social media platform. And of course, if you like content like this, subscribe and ring the bell to let the survivors in the town know that the danger is gone.